Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about microtransactions in Call of Duty. Are they good or evil? A little bit of dramatic title. We're going to be talking about microtransactions as they relate to Call of Duty and other games in general. The gameplay that you're going to be seeing is me using my Space Cats Camo SA805. I'm going to be putting the whiskers on people at long range here. I even get like whisker sights. I never really intend to kill them at that range, but I do plan to slow their rush into the B flag, hoping that'll help my teammates take it. Unfortunately, my teammates in this game aren't very great. I play really good. I go about 30 and 16, if I'm not mistaken and four captures, which is the most on the team. The rest of the team does not break into double digits, and we have a lot of 3 and 12, 5 and 20 something, 1 and 30, just pretty bad, so you're going to get to see me play really hard and try to survive all the enemy kill streaks. But let's move back to the topic and off of the gameplay a little bit. Let's talk about microtransactions. They first showed up back in Black Ops 2. Some people really didn't like them. I didn't find them particularly bad. Had some crazy quirky camos, but they're showing up more frequently now in Ghost. We're going to have sort of like mini DLCs in between our DLCs. The first round saw camos, characters, and create a class slots. There were some people that did not like the create a class slots, thought that it might be, uh, pay to win or some sort of big advantage for having those which I kind of agree with in a way and we're going to talk about before we move forward I think it would be best if we defined what a microtransaction is just so that we're all on the same page Wikipedia slash Google Dictionary, whatever you want to search for, will usually describe a microtransaction as a financial transaction that involves a very small sum of money, or a purchase that involves a very small sum of money, or something of that, just a small sum of money. And a good uh, benchmark for this one is PayPal defines any transaction under 12 US dollars as a microtransaction. Why that's their benchmark, I'm not entirely sure, but they're a pretty, they're basically like the bank of the internet. They're a pretty good arbiter of what is and is not a microtransaction, so we'll stick with their definition. Anything under $12 counts as a microtransaction. Uh, as far as Call of Duty is concerned, my biggest gripe with microtransactions is I'm a little bit confused as to why they're not covered in the Season Pass. When we purchase the Season Pass, it's supposed to be access to everything, if I'm not mistaken. It usually says the DLCs for the rest of the year. And depending on who you ask in the support, or you know, before the game come out, the media ask a million questions and you get conflicting answers sometimes. Uh, sometimes they say the microtransactions are covered, sometimes they're not. But if I'm paying 50 or 60 extra dollars for the Season Pass, which is supposed to be everything Call of Duty. It shouldn't be everything Call of Duty star asterisks except for microtransactions because, well, whatever. If I'm paying for that, it doesn't really cost you any extra money to not give me the micro DLC for free, or perhaps it's more of an economic thing. If it's not included to begin with, if it's not expected, we don't have to give it, and the people that have a higher propensity to buy downloadable content will also buy the micro DLC and make more money. Maybe that's the logic, I'm not entirely sure. But I do believe that microtransactions in general can be a good thing for Call of Duty, which sounds pretty opposite of what I just said a second ago, but they provide an incentive for the developers to make new content. Uh, the downloadable content cycle in Battlefield and Call of Duty, what I'm sure will be in Destiny and Titanfall when they come out, the additional DLC cycle is not there because they love the game that much, it's not there because you guys are so awesome, it's there to keep people playing, to keep people off of competitors' game, and keep a revenue stream flowing. There's a very hardcore economic reason for why we get so much DLC and that's because it's profitable, it makes money, and it messes with the competition. Micro DLC gives them a slightly different incentive. It's a monetary incentive, but instead of just dumping on everybody else, it gives the developers a chance to do something a little bit more fun, to do something quirkier like Space Cats or Rubber Duckies or just something that you wouldn't normally see in these big hardcore heavily advertised packages. They add some value to the game, they're usually inexpensive, and most people are happy with you know microtransactions, League of Legends being one of them. Most people aren't really that upset with what they buy here in Call of Duty. I, I haven't talked to anybody that bought a camo and they were like, man, I, I hate this circuit camo. It's awful. I wish I had my money back. Pricing varies. Some people wish they hadn't have spent as much, but generally people do enjoy it. However, one thing that's really new this time around is the extra create a class slots. Those I might, I am somewhat inclined to believe are on the slippery slope to pay to win. I didn't, this was not a unique thought to me. I was talking to a a Maccabee or Adam, who's another Call of Duty VIP. We talk about things on occasion. And um, he mentioned that he didn't like it because it confers an advantage to those that don't have the slots. In any other Call of Duty game, I wouldn't care. When it was in Black Ops, it didn't matter because you had to choose like your, your class page that you were on. I had 10 slots, but I had to choose which page I wanted to use. So you could have like an SMG page or an in-depth page or whatever. 
In this game, however, you're limited to six slots, and you would get your extra slots when you... Not even extra slots, you would get extra characters, like you would prestige your uh, characters. I really only wanted one. I don't know, maybe I'm just lazy and I didn't care to prestige. I just got my uh, lady, her name was like Garlegniano, Garlegniano, I maxed her out. And I was still kind of sad that I wouldn't get any more creator class slots. I would just get more characters. But when I bought the extra slots, I get all the stuff that I want. I get, I think it was with 12 slots. And that was pretty nice. And it does give me a small advantage over people that only have six. Now, those people can prestige. They can unlock more stuff and they can keep going. But I do get my advantage. I get a little bit of extra versatility. My guns aren't stronger. They don't kill harder. They're not, you know, radically better. I would liken it to people that just have a lot of champions in League of Legends. That doesn't make them better pl you know, playing the game. Certainly not. I know some people people that spend a lot of money on that game and they're terrible at it, but it does make them more adaptable, more pliable. They can do different things. They can adapt to what you have going on a little bit easier. But we may be seeing more of this in the future. Call of Duty could adapt a more uh, free-to-play or pay-to-win kind of model in the future. If you're unaware, there is a version of Call of Duty on sale in China. It's not on sale. It's free-to-play in China right now called Call of Duty Online. It's in Chinese only, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it based only on what I've heard of others that play it with a VPN or uh, the press releases and whatnot, not because it is just absolutely not available in the United States. My phone is booping there a little bit. I'm sure that you heard it. It's a free-to-play model that seems to be yanked right out of the League of Legends handbook. You start off with some basic weapons, basic perks and stuff, and the more you play, the more you're able to unlock. You get a kind of online currency or experience points, and you unlock things as you go. However, it takes much longer than our standard US prestiging and unlocking. You know, you can do this in a couple hours and get some really good stuff. The uh, online model, you have to play a real Really, really long time to get the stuff or you could pay a little bit of money and unlock your perks and guns for free in the context of Call of Duty I believe that it provides a pretty strong advantage compared to people that won't have some of the more standard competitive perks but I can't really speak of how it's balanced because I personally have not played it. It's not available in the United States, so I don't entirely know. I, I'm a little wishy-washy about it. It could be really neat if you start off with some useful perks and you get the more eclectic stuff later, but if you have all of the weird stuff and none of the really awesome perks like sleight of hand or quick draw or what, you know, whatever you aim down sights fast with, uh, if those are locked and you have to pay for it, that could be more problematic because, you know, when I get sleight of hand, especially like the old Jan Olden uh, MW3 sleight of hand where it's fast reloading and quick ADS, I can ruin people. There are some other kind of games that you might see around that have different kind of models. I would say a good free-to-play game, I've talked about it a little bit, is League of Legends. In League of Legends, it's completely fair. You can pay to get better runes. Actually, you can't actually, to get your runes, which is like a little boost on your champion, you have to play the game. You actually can't buy those. The only thing you can buy are decorative items, and you can buy uh, champions to unlock for free, which is basically like unlocking a skill set. And the prices are pretty cheap. They're pretty reasonable. Honestly, I've spent more money on League of Legends this year than I have on Call of Duty, and I've spent $100 on Call of Duty, so please, please don't judge me. There are some lesser free-to-play games that border on the on the pay to win model planet side and warframe are these kind of things I've played Planet Side and Warframe. I can play those games and I can do pretty well or okay in them just playing for free. But if I really wanted to go PvP and I really wanted to win and just be a boss, there are some things you can buy and just dominate the other team. Just some things that would take ages to unlock. And you can spend like $10,000 on those games and not unlock everything. It's crazy how much money you can spend. And it's not even cosmetic stuff. That's just stuff to unlock. So those get a little bit wishy-washy. Uh, the two pay-to-win games I'd like to talk about. These are not ones that I played. Some of my friends play them. I read reviews about them. I keep up with the gaming, and they're just not things for me. That would be uh, Candy Crush and Plants vs. Zombies. You have to pay to get this. You have to pay to get that. You have to play to advance in the level, and I just don't like that. Pay to win is always bad. Paying to get huge advantages over other players always breaks the game, and it usually ends up killing the game model, so I don't know why developers would ever go for that to begin with. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the commentary. I hope you learned something useful, and if you don't like microtransactions, if you don't like DLC, See, I would tell you to vote with your wallet and not with your mouth. Writing comments on the internet are ignored, but when you don't buy something, that's a serious problem for whoever's making it. Drifter out.